Tis the season to shine with H&M. Discover the holiday collection and find fashionable pieces for your wardrobe or for under the tree. Get inspired and dazzle with this year's glam. From tuxedo styles, bow detailed pieces, impressive prints, and more. From unforgettable looks to unforgettable gifts. With fashion finds to home decor, find it all at H&M. Treat your loved ones and yourself this season. Shop in-store or at hm.com. The holidays are a time to feel and create joy. And what could be more joyous than the look on her face as she unwraps a stunning new jewelry piece from Blue Nile? How about getting 50% off your purchase? Blue Nile offers premium quality, priced below traditional retail. Their online experts are available 24-7 to answer any questions. And make sure you've picked the perfect gift. For a limited time, you can get 50% off at BlueNile.com. That's 50% off at BlueNile.com. Welcome to another episode of Shades of Blue video interview 1v1. I still got to come up with a really good name. So if you have a good name for me, let me know. With me, I have Amy Rodriguez, uh, A-Rod, Captain, uh, Grand Scorer of all things. I, what, I mean, <laughs> what's a good title for you here? <laughs> um, you can call me Amy. A lot of people call me A-Rod. I really will answer to anything. As long as it's respectful. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, for those who don't know, Amy Rodriguez is back in Kansas City with Casey Woso, uh, Casey NWSL team, was here before with FC Kansas City, team sort of moved to Utah, kind of weird things, and then Utah kind of moved back. How is it to be back in Kansas City? So yeah, exactly as you said it, it was such an odd um, time for me when our beloved KC team, FC Kansas City, moved to Utah. Um, we were delighted with new ownership there who, who treated us very well. And, um, we found ourselves, uh, you know, a second home. And then just three years later, we turned around and we were getting moved back into Kansas city, which was such a shock. You know, it almost was like, we had just gotten over the idea of moving away from here that we were already on our way back. And, um, I have such fond memories here in Kansas that when I had heard the news, uh, I really was delighted. And for you, you're coming back uh, because you knew Hugh Williams, the, who's now the head coach, who was an assistant coach and a GM for part of the time you were here. Uh, uh, G, nobody want, really wants to say his last name, but Goran. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if anybody else with the team, uh, Jeff, I mean, some of the people who are, who are back with the team and plus whole new ownership and a few new coaches and uh, it seems like a whole lot of new players for us. So although it does feel quite um, like, like the good old days and it does feel a lot um, like we were before, I do find that we are a totally revamped team. Um, some similar faces, both players and staff members, but mostly um, we're, we're kind of a new squad. And I actually really like that because we have a new opportunity to kind of redefine ourselves and to reintroduce ourselves to this city and this crowd. Um, I know our fans are like with the biggest opens ar open arms right now. Um, and we're just excited to play for them. And I hope that we show them something new, something fresh, um, some really, really good soccer that impresses people and gets them excited and out of their seats. Um, but I think right now, yeah, we're, we're revamping our whole roster. Um, and we're going to hopefully come out here with, with some pretty exciting soccer. Uh, actually, I was on a call earlier today with Hugh, and he's talked a lot about trying to change the culture. And he, he said he talked to the players that were in Utah, and he said uh, something, I, I'm paraphrasing a little bit, but he, he said he told the players that they underachieved. But that was a compliment, not that because he knew that they could do be much better than placing sixth in the league. Um, how is how is that culture change happening? And, you know, it sounds like you're really embracing that, but is, is it the rest of the players or I guess, I don't know if I'm asking that question very well. No, I think, I think what you asked is perfect. Yeah. I, I, I look back at my time at Utah and I do think we underachieved and 
although some can see that as a compliment, you know, for me personally, I, I hang my head and it's, it's kind of puts a sour taste in our mouth that from when we won two championships back to back here in Kansas city, um, we haven't won since. And I think that that chip on our shoulder and that sense of, of wanting to achieve higher and wanting to do better. Um, I think we're bringing that into this culture here. And as Hugh Williams said, um, you know, we, we're, we want to be the overachievers. We don't want to be underachieving right now. So our eyes are all set on that championship, um, scoring goals and winning games for this club. With, um, and again, like we said, the roster is probably revamping a fair amount with, uh, I know some players left from Utah last year. There's new players coming in and a whole new coaching system, probably a new style of play, new formations, whatever ends up happening. I really don't know that to that detail yet. Uh, is it going to be something you think you can hit the ground running on day one, winning games, or is it going to, you know, take a little while to get into the season? Soccer is a very interesting sport. And um, with the season being so long um, with a lot of games ahead of us, I can only guess that it will be kind of a slow burn for us, especially being new coaching staff, new style of play. Um, we're going to be expected to do things that maybe we're not used to. It's going to be, it's going to be a process of, of getting good. And I will say that this team has a lot of talent and a lot of very high quality players, some of which who haven't even joined us yet. So as the season progresses and we get more of our players and we develop our own individual skills, um, I can only hope that we're going to keep getting better and better. I remember under Vlaco. Blocko Ananovsky, who man, had just happened to move up to be the women's national team coach now. He has a pretty good progression job, uh, job progression there, didn't he? Uh, but I know under him, he seemed, it always seemed to start a little bit slow, but it was because he was always working on refining how the, the team played, how they defended, how you attacked. And uh, I mean, just watching you, you were such a high quality attacker when you came to Kansas City, but I just seemed like every, every week, every month, every year, you became that much better of an attacker. I think your two best uh, goal scoring seasons as a professional was here in Kansas city, 2014 and 15. In fact, that was probably really a couple of good years for you. Cause you had a world cup, um, won a world cup. And, and just going back on your resume a little bit, it was, I was, cause I always try to do a little bit of research, even though I've known you for quite a while now, but uh, two NWSL championships, two Olympic gold medals, a world cup and a world cup runner up. Is that correct? Correct. <laughs> uh, you seem you seem to have a lot of twos going there. Two children too. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and two times in Kansas City. So I, you know, yeah, I'm kind of being silly with numbers now, but it just seems like uh, you you obviously have that success and that history. That must have again. That must have been like a little bright spot. Like, oh, we're going back to Kansas City. Better than any place else we could have probably went. Yeah, I, I like to think of it as double trouble. Um, <laughs> But they always tell you third time's the charm. So it would be phenomenal if I could bring a third championship to Kansas City. And I would agree with you. I had two of my more successful years here. I have only fond memories from this place um, and I hope to create more. Kind of a, a little bit off the soccer side. And, and when you went to Utah as a team, everything was bright, like, every, you know, better training facilities. You guys were tra treated what far better than you were here. And I know how bad that was at times here. Um, was it quite a shock when everything happened at the end that, you know, the, the rep without going into any details, obviously, but was it just a big shock of things that were reported were happening and were being said and why ownership had to, to go away from Kansas city? Well, from Utah. I mean, we, yeah, the, that's the more recent one. Sorry. Yeah. Um, I know it's happened twice now where, you yeah. know, the as has either sold us or backed out. And, um, I think that as professional athletes, we're here to play soccer. We're here to put our boots on and score goals, win games, um, entertain crowds. And from the very beginning to the very end, that has only been the player's focus, um, in which I'm very proud of this team for, for taking on that responsibility and, and keeping our eyes on the prize. Uh, I think now we are filled with so much positivity, our new ownership here, um, is so ecstatic and passionate and you just can't help, but want to play and perform for people like that. Cool. When, uh, when all that did happen, um, you know, it, would have been, it was going to be another move for you and, you know, you have family and, um, uh, you're not the youngest player on the team anymore. We're not saying you're old. Cause I know you can play for a few more years, but was that even <laughs> a consideration that maybe you would retire at that point? 
you know, just say, okay, I'm, this is enough frustration or is just the desire to go out and score some more goals on and make goalies look sad. still there. (laughs) I've always had this just burning passion to keep playing. Um, It has not dwindled yet. And even after coming back from having my two pregnancies and coming back from ACL surgery, each time I like was so excited to lace my boots up and put them back on again. Um, And I think that's why I've stayed in the game as long as I have. Um, I absolutely love practice. I love going out there and training and working hard. Um, It's something I'm not ready to let go of yet. Um, And when that time comes, I'm, I'm hopeful that I will feel it and it'll feel right. Again, we, we want that to be a few more years down the road for you. Um, You're going to be a coach. You're going to just go be a a soccer mom or, you know, start a new business. Uh, Do you have any, you know, do you have that, that plan or that, that, or it's not even in the thought right now. I'm just going to go score goals. I'm going to go with D all the above. (laughs) Fair enough. Uh, as, as somebody who's kind of blundered into several different jobs in my life, I can, I, I really don't anticipate things. I just go with it when it happens and works right. So I'm, I'm, I have confidence that that will go for you. Um, all right. I, I do, like I said, I did a little bit of research, but I has also asked one of your coaches if they had a question I should ask you. And I, and I promised that coach anonymity, uh, but he wanted to know who your favorite Welsh coach is. <laughs> <laughs> oh Hugh it's not fun <laughs> he is my favorite Welsh coach though for sure and I am um very excited to work with him this year especially in a different role because I've never had him as my head coach um in my first year at Kansas City he was GM and assistant and uh now to work under him again I respect his coaching style so much and even just the, the small bit of trainings that I've been, um, that, that I've attended this far, um, I'm really liking what I'm seeing. So excited about the, uh, the potential of this year. Yeah. It does seem like he's very much the, uh, you know, we're going to, we're going to go score goals kind of coach. He, he said, if we give up three, we're going to get four. He's not a, <laughs> he's not a one, nothing win guy. He'll take those, but he's a, he's a win three to two, four to three kind of guy at me. Four, four goals, no pressure. Okay, thank you. <laughs> well, I didn't say you had to get them all. <laughs> okay. Which, uh, again, part of um, speaking of that, a little the research I was doing, and it was actually just refreshing my memory because I remember this from before, but in 2014 and 15, when you guys won the two championships, the uh, semifinal and final between both years, the team only gave up one goal in those four games. That was to Megan Rapino you scored eight goals. The team scored eight goals. You scored six of those eight, all of the game winners for all four games. Wow. So you were pretty well counted on those years. (laughs) Um, Yeah. And as a striker, that is the the responsibility that you take on your shoulders. And it's a position that I'm comfortable doing. Um, You know, I train really hard to, to get ready for those moments. And I hope that I can help the team out this year in that way as well. So trivia question for you. Do you know who scored the other two goals in those playoffs? If I had to guess, is it a, a Lauren Chaney or an Erica Timrak or a Heather got, O'Reilly? You, yep, you got both of them. Okay. So each, each got one. Excellent. <laughs> you didn't know there was going to be trivia, right? No. <laughs> uh, I, I, wish I, I wish I had more for you now. Actually, <laughs> I gave up the I, – I, when I talked to you a couple of weeks ago – briefly as you were driving by uh you were still not allowed to practice and so i wasn't anywhere near you uh but i told you the one bit of trivia that you were the very first professional women's player that i'd ever interviewed well actually yeah. first women's player of any kind because i was at that draft and it just happened to be they said hey anybody want to go interview a rod i'm like sure i didn't I, <laughs> i'll be fair i did not i did not really even know who the college players were at the time mm-hmm. uh, i mean i i had already seen you play i think in the Olympics, but yeah, no. So I was pretty, pretty stupid. So yeah, <laughs> I apologize for not probably being a lot better questions now. Well, many years later, we'll, we're still doing the same stuff. So it's very cool. Yeah. And when, when I retire, I'm going to seek you out and okay. you'll be my last interview. How about that? Okay. <laughs> you might still be playing. Um, <laughs> have you, have you brought your family here yet? Or I mean, your boys, or is that going to be after spring training or 
So preseason is always a really focused time for me. Um, I'm really fortunate that my husband takes care of the, the two little boys we have um, back at home in our house in California um, while I'm gone here. Um, but that's mainly, like I said, just to let me focus and really hone in on my team, um, you know, work through all the ups and downs of preseason and the physical battle that it, it is. Um, so the boys will be out here. My, my children and my husband will be able to come out here a little bit through the season. Um, and I hope to see them cheering, cheering for us on the sideline. I'm, I'm quite sure you will. And that, that is a little bit different uh, preseason than you were able to do here. I'm not sure about in Utah, but you guys didn't get to go to Florida when you were with the previous Kansas City team, did you? No, but we've never been here in January and February. It is very cold. We have to train indoors or seek out some warmer weather climates to train in. Yeah, I think uh, previously they all started in March, if I remember mm -hmm. correctly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you're, for those who might be watching this later from a nicer place, it, the highs right now are single digits and wind chills yeah. are in the minus teens. So it's not a, it's not even like a, we we're being a wimp and not wanting to be outside. It's brutal. Brutal. I know it bums me out because I wanted to at least come stand outside the fence and watch you guys practice a little bit because I love to watch players and kind of get my own idea of how things are going. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so I, I, unfortunately, I don't get to do that until you guys come back. It, it, maybe not even then with with how restrictions are. So, um, all right. Well, I, I don't want to keep you forever. I, I just wanted <laughs> to kind of get a brief chat in with you and welcome yeah. you to Kansas City. Um, I really look forward to the way he has spoken about how he wants to play a possession and quick attacking. And I think that's, that's right up your alley. Yep. Absolutely. I cannot wait and looking forward to seeing you out on the sidelines. And hopefully my next photo of you is a lot better than my last photo of you. <laughs> <Okay>. <Yeah. laughs> it was uh, being helped off the sideline. So, Oh yeah. Well, yeah, that was a sour taste in my mouth back in 2017. My last game here would have been the game I tore my ACL in. So, but I, I, like I said before, I have only fond memories of this place. So I am looking forward to, to getting back on that field again. Then we look forward to seeing you back out there. Uh, thanks again and appreciate the time.